Hey everybody, got another video here for you. Um, I'm working on the Gibson. And I decided that I'd film a phase of guitar building that I've never filmed before. And I've only seen it done a very, very, very few times. So, here we go. If we can get the camera to pause. So this is where it all starts. I went through my file. Yeah. This is getting bad. This is file number two, actually. I got another file even bigger. Well, about the same size from like the first year or so of building guitars. So, um, yeah, this is more or less the list of builds at this time. And the stuff with a dot by it is the stuff that I think I'll take on at the moment. And the rest is something to think about. So, yeah, I've got one, two, three, four, five, six. So, that's cool. But one of the things is, is that if you want to always have some Lego blocks to play with, then, you know, unless you keep tearing down builds in order to get your Lego blocks back, you've got to keep ordering more Lego blocks, which means the, the very first step is you go through and you kind of make a parts shopping list and then you'll order up the stuff that you don't have. So that's sort of where I'm at with the, with the Gibson. So this is guitar number five and this is the inspiration for the Gibson. It's, uh, this is, this is actually the first video that I ever posted on YouTube was of this guitar before it was refinished and actually before it was even finished as anything more than a rapid prototype. And it's been through a couple versions and been refinished and Got a fine tuner tailpiece on it and things like that. And, but uh, the idea was that, you know, hey, if I've got Gibson hardware here, I really should build a, a real Gibson with like a Gibson scale length neck and stuff like the Gibson style pickups and, and so on and so forth. So that's sort of the inspiration. And I'll be using this bridge and this tailpiece off of this guitar and strap locks and maybe some other miscellaneous parts, perhaps. So here's the Gibson neck for the build. And this thing is absolutely beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. Frets aren't in bad shape either. So, um, I've been debating about whether I should go totally classic Gibson on this, except for a minimalist body. Yeah, for the body, I would be using Probably some of this uh, knotty pine here. This is like a. How long is this thing? Looks like I got about seven foot of it in a one by six. So, plenty of pine to work with. And, um. Ah, there's more. Here we go. set of Gibson style PAF humbuckers and just in case these already have it a set of gold covers but yeah it looks like these are already gold no these are uh, creams with no covers so yeah 
set of creams in a hump in a PAF style humbucker and then gold covers go with it and uh, haven't decided on pick guard color yet or a body stain color yet uh, or whether I'll even stain the neck or anything like that haven't really decided on that uh, gold finish for the hardware in general I'm thinking and then as far as like How far to go on making it a Gibson versus making it an X13 or whatever. Um, well, going to keep the headstock because it's going to have the tail tuner, the fine tail tuner on it. But I'm thinking go lightweight tuners, and I'm pretty sure I've got a 3x3 set of those here left over from whatever the last lightweight tuner build was. Um... A lock nut and yeah that's one question no nope, it's a Gibson type construction with a 14 degree neck and no scarf joint so yeah easy to break this puppy but it does have a volute so that's cool I shouldn't touch it my hands are too dirty um so yeah a lock nut and with the brake angle like this, you might not even need the hold down bar or the string retainer. And um, I don't think I'm going to carve the neck. I'll leave it as a stock neck. And it's got a pretty flat heel on it anyway. So I'll kind of do it like the fretless and just leave it a, an OEM type neck or a traditional type neck with the lightweight tuners and lock nut. And that'd do it for the neck and for the body. It'll just be a minimalist pine thing with a swing bar. And uh, that's a swing bar for the X8 there. I mean the guitar number eight. And then you saw the bridge. You saw the tailpiece. It'll get a set of strap locks. Um, I might even have those in stock already. They're cheaper by the half dozen. So, it's like, oh, I'm out of gold again. Shit, just order up another half dozen. And then you can get them for like two bucks a lock, buck fifty a lock. So, that's not a bad deal. And you can do them on almost everything that you need for building guitars. eBay is your friend. More than any other website I've seen yet. Unless you need it tomorrow. And then Amazon's your friend. If Amazon has it. If eBay doesn't have it, odds are nobody has it. So, When it comes to parts, when it comes to guitars themselves, you can find them in all the usual suspects. I've found some of my, some of my greatest finds have been on places like DHgate and things like that, so... But anyway, um, I digress. So, all right, that's that's the neck. That's the pickups. Um, yeah, I was actually at the point where I need to check the pickups here and see if they have coil split because I'm trying to decide on the electronics. And on the electronics side, I can either go with like a classic LP type setup with two volumes and two tones. Or I can go with, you know, a modern type setter setup based on what I've got to work with, which is coil splittable humbuckers. Which means that I could go crazy with like wind make blend pots and a three way and coil split and good stuff like that. Phase. So, yeah. So, electronics, um, well, I suppose some of it would sort of depend on the outcome of the Guitar 8 build, which I suppose I'm going to, like, put the whammy on for electronics, so. But this thing's definitely going to have two pickups, so it's going to get a three-way, and... 
let's see, it's coil split, so you could get coil splits. They're easy. And since it's going to have more than one pickup, you could put a phase switch on it, which is a little bit of work, but you only got to do one, so. And then, uh, then let's see, um, you want a volume and a blast or a bypass for the volume would be nice. And an on-off would be nice. And then it's a question of tone controls. Do you go with a traditional tone pot? Do you go with an onboard EQ? Do you go with none of the above? I mean, you could just wire it up with the coil split phase, a three-way, and that's it. Or you could just oil it up, wire it up with just a three-way, and that's it. So, yeah. At the, at the most basic, you'd be at like a three-way, and that's it. A three-way and a jack. No volume, no nothing. Um, next step up would be like a three-way switch and a volume and a jack. And, oh, and a kill button. Yeah, can't forget the kill button. Kill button goes in like all is all the above scenarios, I guess you would say. So yeah, a three-way switch, a kill button, and a jack would be like the minimal amount of electro electronics, I would say. And there you've got all the bases covered as long as you're not trying to play it more, as long as you're not relying on the volume as part of your tone, so to speak. In which case, you could throw in a volume and then for completeness, a uh, blast or bypass switch for the volume. So there's no trouble loss for the purists. And use a 500 meg pot for uh, when you do use the volume. So there's practically no trouble bleed anyway. So, so now you're up to a three-way with a kill and a volume and a blast. And then if you want to make total use of the pickups, you throw in two splits and a phase. And then the only thing you're missing is the on-off switch. And you've got everything except for like a tone control or an onboard EQ, including like all your volume options, on off and blast and, and volume control. So, so yeah. And then it's a question of, do you go with tone controls like a, a tone pot or two? Or do you go with, uh, or do you go with an EQ, or do you go with blend knobs? So yeah, blend knobs is another way to do it. Um, you would use. Well, if you can get enough cut out of a one meg pot, then you could just use. Two pickups that are always in parallel with two blend knobs. And then you could throw in phase and coil split. And you'd already have volume on the two blend knobs pretty much. You'd throw in an on off and a kill button, of course. And, uh, and that would give you everything right there pretty much. Except for, as far as the volume goes, it wouldn't give you tone controls, but, but yeah. So, once again, things to try. I guess I should plan for the best, and then I can always buy the parts for the worst if the best doesn't work out. So, so maybe do 
two pickups and two blends and uh, two coil splits and a phase and a volume and a blast and a kill. I might have all those switches. <coughs> Once again, buy them six at a time, ten at a time, twelve at a time, whatever the the size happens to be for the part in question. And you can get them real cheap. I mean, it's like I can get these like the toggle switches are between a buck and two or between a dollar and two dollars depending on you know if they're like a double pole three-way on 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 or just a simple one two pole or one pole switch with with two connectors for a, a just an on off switch so and same idea for all the rest of the electronics you buy it by the cheaper by the dozen man you know what they say. So, so yeah, I guess I, I should think about a pair of blends and hopefully I won't need on offs. If I do, then I go to a three way. So, a pair of blends and um, a pair of coil splits. And a pair of, uh, oh, single phase, just one phase switch. It doesn't matter which one you throw out of phase in respect to the other. As long as you throw one out of phase in respect to the other, you'll get the same effect no matter what. So, so the phase can go somewhere down by the volume and just be a, like a master switch. And then a volume and a kill button, wherever the kill button would be, someplace near the pickups. And uh, and maybe throw in an on off switch and a blast switch, just to be thorough. So, that might work for like a, a more modern way of wiring up uh, a coil splittable twin humbucker guitar than the, the Les Paul way, a more modern way than the Les Paul way. And that would be very nice, because you'd have your blends. You have no, well, I guess you'd have to throw on an EQ in order to really bring it up to spec. So you do everything I said and you add an EQ. Well, you lose the master volume and the blast switch and instead you just take everything and send it to the EQ. So you would have a pickup with a coil split and then a blend volume knob that was not grounded and same on this one and then they both go into a phase switch then the output of the phase switch would go into the EQ and then the output of the EQ would be the output jack for the guitar. And that would be the way to wire it. So I guess that'll be the way to wire it then. So time to fish up some parts. So this is the cool parts box. I've got Three boxes of parts at the moment, more or less. A small one like this, with all the quill stuff in it, so like all the roller bridges and EQs and, and lightweight tuners and stuff like that. And then I've got two boxes of, of like everything else, which is like all the leftover stuff from all these guitars modding well let's see I've got over 70 guitars now and probably three quarters of them are either mods or kit builds or parts casters and and a lot of them or let's say maybe a quarter of those started out as just buying a guitar and modding it and replacing a bunch of hardware and 
maybe refinishing it and stuff. So, so yeah, I got a lot of leftover parts, but this is all the good stuff. And that right there is a sack full of uh, lightweight tuners. Well, looks like I got a whole bunch of right hands. And I got this one left hand here. And then I got two sets of uh, two by twos. So I can get one set of three by threes out of these. And there it is, a set of three by threes and all the associated hardware ready to be bagged and tagged. So at first glance, I was thinking this was a black nut, but I think it might already be gold. Yeah, that's cool hardware. So, that's cool. Got a lock nut in the hole down bar already in the proper color. And as you can see, the strap locks are also gold hardware, so I can reuse those as well. I saw something on Amazon recently that might be of interest. It's a, uh, it's a volume pot that has a momentary push button on it that works as a kill button. Very cool. Unfortunately, at the moment, I don't have an appropriate build going on in order to try one of these things out. But yeah, if you're doing a build that's like, you know, a metal machine with one pickup and all you've got is a volume knob on it, and you want to do combine the volume knob with the kill button and be slick you can do it that way and they're like 17 bucks for the pot and it comes in like all kinds of different resistance flavors so might be something to check out okay went fishing through the first bag of electronics and i came up with gold knobs Gibson knobs, a set of B500 pots. Uh, I might have A500s. I found one in a mini, and I might have another one around somewhere. Um, single pole, single through, double through switches. That's your uh, coil splits. And these are double pole, double throw switches, which should be plenty good enough in order to do a, uh, a phase switch. And then another single pole, single throw that could be used for this on off switch. And I forgot a part, hold on. An EQ, a battery box, and a power connector for the battery box for the EQ. And you already saw the pickups, so I think that'll cover it for the electronics. I'm going to dig up the other bag of electronics parts and see if I can come up with a pair of A500 pots. Um, I'm pretty sure that you need at least 500Ks, if not a meg, in order to do a blend where you can't really hear it at all. Because as I recall, I tested it with 500 meg and you could still hear it. A little bit when it was turned all the way down because of the fact that it's not grounded if you ground it then it's like a Gibson you go to zero and it kills the whole guitar and don't really want that that's why it's a blend pot and not a volume pot it's because it's not grounded so it just blends the pickup sound in and out but in general, in general, it's just still pickups in parallel. What you have is you have some amount of control over the volume of the individual pickups in parallel. And the bigger the pot, the higher the resistance, the more control you have. The closer it approaches to the behavior of a true volume pot. And I looked online, and in a guitar-sized pot, 
it looks like about one meg's the biggest you're gonna find. You might find something, you know, bigger than one meg in something not a guitar sized pot that's still not too big or something like that, but I didn't really get into that. Something to check into, perhaps. Okay, I didn't find any more pots in the other bag, so no A500Ks to work with. Um, I'll try these B500s, and if necessary, I can get like A500s or A1 megs or whatever. Thank God for Amazon. So I think as far as the guitar goes, I've pretty much fished up everything. You've seen the neck and the lightweight tuners. I'm going to reuse this nut and this hole down. And uh, what else? You've seen the wood. There's the wood right there. Going to make the new body and the swing bar out of. Just a single swing bar. And uh, this block of wood here for the tailpiece, if it needs it be made out of this stuff as well and it's going to be using this bridge and this tailpiece and you saw the electronics and um yeah it's not going to use that jack it'll use the the eq which means it's going to need a bar kind of thing going down here to mount the eq on and someplace back here for the other electronics and uh strap locks yeah, it's got strap locks, so yeah, I think that's all the parts necessary for the build. And I didn't come up with anything that I don't have, actually. Which means I guess I've got all the parts necessary to work on the Gibson. Very cool. Very cool. I've got to tell you, I'm kind of torn. I think I really need to make two versions of this guitar because part of me wants to take that that neck and I've got Gibson style tuners as opposed to lightweight tuners. They don't weigh that much more and I could use those tuners and still use the Floyd Rose and then I could swap out the the PAF style humbuckers for the P90s that I still have yet to use and then I could use these guys and like four pots and implement a classic LP kind of wiring. And that would be one kind of Gibson. And then what I just described with the blends and things like that, that would be like a more updated kind of Gibson. So I guess this will be the updated Gibson build. And then I'll have to do a classic LP type build as well. But I mean... I call it an LP type build, but if you look at Gibson's LPs, Explorers, um, Vs, Moderns, um, do they make anything else? <laughs> uh, but, but yeah, if you look at Gibson, I mean, it's almost, it's almost like all the same guitar, you know, they got the, the tailpiece, they got the, the TOM, they got the the Gibson scale length, they got the the headstock design, and well, not shape, but I mean like, you know, no scarf joint and the 14 degree stuff, and no volute, usually, and, uh, and yeah, these, these trademark design choices that, that seem to run you know, it's all kind of the same guitar in my mind. The only thing that really changes is the shape of the body, by and large. I mean, you know, there might be some Gibsons that have slightly different layout for controls, but other than that, you know. And I'm not a fanboy of any particular brand, so I don't pay attention to like, oh, well, this year had a, only had, you know, one tone. Oh. Who the fuck cares? So what? I mean, it's like... <laughs> yeah. Like I said, I'm not a tone chaser, so... 
So the particular stuff on a particular piece of gear, unless it's something, you know, cool and interesting, doesn't really excite me. But anyway, I'm rambling once again, as I always do. I ramble. It's terrible. Um, yeah, so back to what I was talking about. It looks like I really should build two of these things. One in a classic and Gibson configuration with like the Cluson type tuners or whatever they call them. The ones with the jade green knobs. And, uh, because I got a set of those, man. And I got a set of P90s. And I got these knobs. And I got four pots. And I could do it like that. You know, I got black pickguard material. And not this, but it looks just like it wherever I put it. Here it is. Yeah, I put it into the coffee can. This is that brown dye that I was using on Guitar 8 for the swing bar post thing. And uh, I just mixed it all together. But that right there, maybe cut it with a little bit of water. And I'm right in the zone for doing a Gibson Yellow. So, it'd be so easy. But, um, but this isn't terribly hard either. And, you know, they're both viable builds. So, I guess i got to get another neck. <laughs> it really comes down to the necks. It's all about the necks. I mean, like, if you look at, yeah, I'm really rambling now. If we look at this guitar here. This is guitar number eight, and it's under construction. It has some parts that are in the, uh, they're in the paint shop at the moment, but there's the guitar itself, and this neck is actually on its fourth build. It was originally a, Steinberger Spirit Kit, which over here. Yeah, there goes my bottle of rum. Let's see if I can do this without getting in light. Zoom might be our friend. thing. That was the body that this neck originally came with. It was a kit, a little over a hundred bucks off of eBay. Uh, Steinberger kind of a thing. Sort of like a spirit, sort of shaped like an Eiffel Tower or something. And then uh, originally I did it in all white lacquer. Even the fretboard, even the fingerboard, even the frets were white lacquer. The whole guitar, every inch of it, the bridge, the strap locks, it had a white leather strap. It was all white guitar, the pickups, everything. Everything on the guitar was white. Every last nut, bolt, screw, and washer was white lacquer. And I didn't like it. So then it got refinished in like a burgundy that you see here barely through the grain and then uh and then it became the neck for guitar number six which is that one right there and that was a fail because the trim doesn't work with Ernie Ball 8s. And now it's going to be the neck for this thing. So yeah, it's all about the neck. And so yeah, this thing's going to get, well, this bridge and this tailpiece are going to get the Gibson neck. And that will free up this neck for another build, which is a cool thing, because uh, 
nice Ibanez replacement neck and one of these infamous orange dots that I keep going off about. If you're in the market for a nice neck, these things are still, depending on supply, you can still find them for as low as 45. And it's really a great neck, 14.7 inch radius and 24 fret, decent fret work. Always decent fret work, always decent wood. I've never had any issues at all with these necks. And that's their quote unquote orange dot. It's more copper than anything, so. Yeah, works for me at that price for sure. Okay, enough about necks. So I guess to be thorough, I actually have to do four kinds of Gibson sticks. You've got the classic kind, which would use the Jade tuning key tuners, the classic Gibson tuners, and uh, it would use these kind of knobs and use the four, the two volume, two tone electronics, and two humbuckers. And a, and a rhythm treble switch. And then you'd have, basically it would have like LP type electronics on it. And then you'd have, uh, and then you'd have the modern version, which is what I was talking here, using these knobs and the blends and phase and coil split and stuff on the EQ. And then you'd also, and you'd do, that would be two versions, and the other two versions is you would do those two versions using PAFs, and you'd also do two versions using P90s. So that would actually be four versions. You'd have the, the classic version and the modern version in PAF, and the classic version and the modern version in P90s and I've got the pickups to do one of each but uh, I've only probably got the hardware to do like one modern version but I'll, I guess I'm going to start with a, a modern PAF version and then I can do the other three later on. Looks like I need to order some more necks. As I recall, they weren't exactly cheap. Yeah, they're they're around fifty bucks, as I recall. I mean, you can still get a like a Tele neck or Strat neck for like thirty five bucks, maybe forty today. But but yeah, and you can get a a, a Super Shredder Ibanez type neck for like forty five bucks. Or maybe 50 bucks today that kind of idea but these things were starting at around 50 as I recall so Gibson's are a little pricier then let's see I think about the last design choice is the finish and that's really the hardest, but in this case I've been thinking about it and it's really not that hard because I'm trying to do kind of a Gibson kind of a vibe here. So I'm thinking classic Gibson colors go with the Gibson yellow. Like you see, you know how it is, all old Gibsons that are kind of yellow or kind of brown if they've got that natural or Karina or yellow or, or brown or whatever finish. But they all end up looking, you know, a little yellow or a little brown, depending on how dark everything is. The dye and the wood and stuff, or lacquer and wood. Nitrocellulose and wood. Got to get my materials right here. So, um, so yeah, I'm going to be shooting for Gibson yellow, I think. And, uh, and then black pickguard material. And then the gold hardware. And I think that should give it a good classic Gibson type vibe for the whole build. And, uh, 
and yeah, at that point, at this point, you know, I've figured out enough that I could grab the neck and start chopping tabs off of tuners and slapping tuners and a lock nut on and things like that. And at that point, I've got a neck ready to go once I do, like, you know, fret work and whatever. And uh, I've got a color to stain it, and I'd have a neck ready to go, and I could cut out a body, lay it out. I know it's going to need, you know, extra room for the leg cut out and extra room to mount the EQ, so it's going to sort of resemble an X13, maybe. It won't have the, the notch up the middle that they have for the Steinberger. It'd be more like a kind of a, just a triangular kind of body and then probably some kind of bar coming off of this side for the EQ. And then depending on how much electronics, I might need to run bars off of both sides to support a large control panel. Mount the EQ on top of the control panel and then have the knobs in between the two bars or something like that. But that's a kind of wait and see thing. Um, you know, I don't even have a neck yet, so, well, ready to go. So I don't really need to worry about control layout and design of the body yet. So, but yet at this point, it's all, it's all pretty much figured out except for the minor details, you might say. You know, as far as like, As far as like the, let me zoom in here a little bit. So as far as like, you know, the body goes, it's going to be basically a triangle and everything down to, where's my finger? Here we go. Everything down the bridge is more or less as you see it here kind of a thing. And it'll have a, you know, plastic depth pick guard in between two pickups. It'll have a pickup up here, a pickup down here, plastic depth pick guard in between, bridge, stop tail, fine tuner. And then, uh, and then the only thing left is like exactly the layout of the electronics panel and like, you know, the EQ. And then, so it's more or less just going to have like probably a bar coming down like this, like an X13 does. Yeah, here's an X13 next to it. Oh, let me get this camera over here. And yeah, see that bar coming down on the right side of this thing? Where's my finger? There we go. See that bar coming down there? That's for the EQ, so... It'd be kind of like this with a bar coming down for the EQ and then the electronics would go over here and maybe bring a bar down at this end for the strap, kind of an idea. But like I said, you know, those are details that can yet be worked out. I'd have to take dimensions on like this tail stop piece block or bridge block, whatever you want to call it, and figure out exactly. I'd have to see. Odds are it's probably going to have the same kind of height as this neck, the Gibson neck will, because I don't believe this one has a flat heel on it. So that should be pretty much a, a stock heel height, so to speak. So, uh, so yeah, it's probably going to need some sort of a, a bridge block to go on top of the flat body in order to mount the tailpiece and such in a standard Gibson way. You know, you could always float the bridge, but the stop tail is, is a post mount situation, which means you need a block of wood to mount it in. And then it's just, just a question of what goes past the tailpiece at the bottom of the guitar in the way of electronics. So, 
So by and large, it's figured out. And the rest of it is a case of I can blow up that bridge when I get to it. So there you go. But I probably rambled enough in order to make a whole video here, so I think I'm going to go put another coat of acrylic on the little standoff bar stand thing for the swing bar on the on Guitar 8. This guy. Where's my finger? There's my finger. Yeah, this guy right here. The swing bar goes like right there where my finger is and comes out like this so you need a little post or something in order to reach back over to the body for the thumb screw so right now the post is in the paint shop and and i was figuring out what was next while i wait for the acrylic to dry so time for another coat of acrylic and I think that's going to do it for this video. So until the next one, everybody have a good one. I'll see you all later.